Alrighty, we got an exciting new project. This is a 1982 GL1100 Goldwing, the standard Goldwing. It does have a few issues, however. Um, I bought this thing for $300. I think I might have paid too much. I just don't know yet. Let's do a little tour. First of all, she's a Honda. That's a good thing. Our front brakes. They feel like they work and they're not locking up. I want to say that quietly because you never know what's going to happen next. Throttle? No. It doesn't turn. I suspect these need cleaning about six years ago and they still need cleaned. Rear brake? It goes down, but you have to give it some assistance to get it back up. We have the Super Duper Ultra Long Deluxe exhaust system. We have the farm tractor turn signals on the rear. Got to have those. Got a good tail light though. That looks good. Another farm tractor turn signal hanging right there. Got the rear brake. The old shaft drivey thing looks pretty good. Don't see any problems there yet. There probably will be. We have the ultra deluxe rack and back rest. My wife considers that to be a wheelie bar, so whenever I take off fast, she don't come off the back. We have the Genuine Air Ride Suspension. Oh, that's right. She has air shocks on her. We do have twin piston calipers on the back, and we have the twin piston calipers on the front. Those sweethearts right there. Of course, we have the perpetual fork seal leaking. That's always fun on these. We do have the Marklin steering brace, fork brace. Can never tell if it any difference or not, but maybe, I don't know. It has 20-year-old uh, good tires on it. A little scared to ride on those. We also have the front suspension that's air as well. Got an air putter in her right there and a crossover hose that comes over to this side. So you can adjust those. Now, when I went to buy this thing, he wanted more, but the gas tank was rusty in these, and these are a pain in the hoo-hoo dilly to get the gas tanks out of. You got to take them out the bottom. But I figure we're going to be working on a lot of different subjects of this, so we're going to chop this down into chapters, kind of like you eating it, kind of like eating an elephant. We're going to take one bite at a time. So we're going to, today's job is to do an assessment. See if this thing will turn over, and see if we can actually make some noise out of it. I don't know about that. He said something about the starter motor, and that's always bad. The starter motor don't work. You just don't know what you got, and I bought this thing not knowing what I got. So let's give it a shot. Come along for the ride as we start heading down the GL1100 1982 road. Oh, good news. My goodness, I almost missed it. We got the gremlin bells. So there just can't be much wrong with this thing because all the bad gremlins went to the bell and fell off on the highway. That's the story, anyway. Let's give it a shot. Well, I got the gas tank flapper open. And looky there, we actually have a genuine toolkit right there. That is something special. We also have some paperwork underneath there. We'll see what's going on with that. But here is the real sweetness. Yup, the inside of that gas tank looks just like that gas cap. So I'm not sure what the heck we're going to do about that. I think we, like I said before, we may need to end up pulling the tank out of this thing. See if we can get a shot for you down inside the fuel tank. She's looking a little brown downtown there. And a whole bunch of crud in there. I'd imagine we're going to end up pulling this sweetheart out. And that'll probably be a video all its own, getting that thing out of there. Pretty sure you got to drop the swing arm out of this thing to make that happen. All right, guys. I'm going to start tearing her down. We're going to pull the dummy tank off. Got to pull the seat off to do that. We'll pull the dummy tank, pull the side covers off this thing and get her trimmed down a little bit. And we'll see what we got. Cause I got to tell you, I'm not sure. Bolt number one, already hit the floor. Okay, we expect that. Ah, no worries, no problems. 
got some supreme wiring right here. This is absolute, when you know you're working with the finest, is whenever you have this much combobulated wiring to run just turn signals, tail light, and brake light. Yep, that's good. We'll leave that right there. Let's go ahead and pull this fuel tank cover off. Dummy tank, fuel tank cover, I don't know. Grab my favorite tool in the world, a 10 millimeter T-handle. And we got two bolts back here, one right here, one right here. Put those in our ever-growing bolt collection. Then we have one right here, not stock bolt, but at least it's still metric. Yeah, that's not right. This should have been a flange bolt like the back one and about half that length. That's way too long. Take the one out of the other side. Oh, good news. It matches. It's also a non-OEM bolt, and I think it might be a touch longer even. You notice the uh, paint job on this thing. It's not exactly factory. Yep. Not exactly factory. Let's see what's in store for us inside the old air filter. Really, for as old as this bike is, under here, this thing looks pretty stinking good. Of course, we got the MGO air filter, because the Honda one must have just been way too expensive. We do have a little bit of concern here. Let me show you. We've got quite a bit of oil sitting down inside here. Don't know if that is a problem from blow-by or exactly what yet, but we'll get it figured out. All right, before we dig any farther, I want to hook up a battery to this thing and see if anything will actually shake on this thing. See if we've got lights and all that kind of stuff. Uh, then we can pull the cover off of the uh, plug out from the alternator and see if we can actually turn this engine over. I don't know if it turns or not. Only one way to find out. We've got one rear turn signal. We do have a tail light though. Don't know why that light's on all the time. Oh, look at that, we got us a brake light. Work our way around to the front. Not sure I got everything shown here. We have our dash assembly. We have a warning light on. Don't remember what that is. Neutral light. We also have our rear suspension air pressure warning light on. Have a headlight. We do have high and low beam on the headlight though. We've got both of our front running lights. That's something. And this light goes out when you hit the turn signal this way. This one comes on. Oh, dang, it blinked. I saw it. I swear it did. Oh, look at that. We have us a nice motor rad radiator cap. Not sure that's going to really work too well. No, it's not. It's an 18 pound cap. These are supposed to be a 1.1. All right, well, we're going to continue on. Oh, let's hit the starter button and see what happens. Can you hear that? Our solenoid clicks, but no starter motor. Hmm. The good news is the starter isn't trying to work and not working. It's just not working at all. I wonder if we do the old screwdriver trick, if it'll come to life. We can check the brushes in the starter motor and see if that's going to fix it or not. But uh, yeah, we could do that. I think we're going to pull the plug out of the back of the alternator here and uh, see if this motor actually turns over. That's how you actually turn the motor over whenever you're working on it. You can't get to the front of it because of the radiator. So well, let's do that. All right, this plug right back here is the one we're going to take out and try to turn the engine over. Get rid of our jumper cable. Oh boy, it looks pretty fresh. Hot dog, it turned. This thing had been sitting outside for I know of no idea how long. Whenever I got a hold of it. Let's start with a 17. Look at that, first try. The engine turns too. There, now we're going the right way. 
Make sure we got it a couple of rounds anyway. I'd say that's pretty good. All right, let's drop our starter off and take it apart and see exactly what happened there. All right, this is our starter motor. This is the hot wire running down to it. And uh, somebody's been beating on it, like they're trying to get it to work. Let's get our boot off here and see what we got. We already unhooked the negative cable from the battery. Well, the jumper battery. So there's really not much of a chance we're gonna cause a problem here. You know what, just for the hell of it, we can uh, hook our ground back up. Uh, let's see, we'll just hook it back to this bolt here. That's not very good. That's better. Take this and touch this. And there's no continuity in there. The silly thing is just not doing anything. So off it comes. This, I don't remember how big a job this is. I know this is a gear or a chain driven starter. So hopefully that sweetheart doesn't fall in there too far. Uh, it ain't nothing we can't fix if it does, but I'd rather not deal with it. There's one starter mount bolt out. And the other one, you kind of kind of got to take a roundabout approach to get to it. It's down here, and we're going to try to come under there and in there and see if we can fiddle this cha-cha that way. I bought a new Milwaukee socket set. I absolutely love it. Okay, those are out. We need to slide our starter back and then we'll come out this way. Oh shit. This thing must be like entirely too full of oil. That's the way it works. As soon as I get the pan, it's done. Yeah, there's a lot of gas in that. I think probably ought to go ahead and drain the oil before we make an even bigger mess because this is making a huge mess now. Running down through the crack on the lift, onto the floor, and everywhere else you can imagine. Watch out! The ring plug's tight enough. That's for certain. I'll pop a drain plug out of here and get this crap draining out of here. Oh yeah. She is a draining all right. We'll be up here and give you a better view of oil draining because that's always an exciting video. This thing made an oil puddle over there on the floor where it was setting too. I've had this thing for a couple of months now. It set over there in Lake Oil on the floor pretty much all the time. Um, not a tremendous amount, but an aggravating amount nonetheless. All right, catastrophe averted. Let's get back to our starter motor. Don't know if I'm gonna take the shifter off to get that. Oh, look at that. All I do is slip her in gear. Put her back in neutral. We got three screws that hold this whole thing together and it already has witness marks on it right here and here. But I like to make my own. We're not gonna be doing a whole lot of uh, parts cleaning this thing. So I'm just gonna make them easier to see with a Sharpie. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Those others are there. If we take this thing to the parts washer and wash them off, well, that's okay. But I like doing that to make myself feel better. I 
Hopefully we just need some brushes in this sweetheart and the commutator can all burn up. There's always a chance because somebody was beating on it after it quit working to make it work just a little more. This is a Mitsuba starter. With Hondas you get two different ones. I don't remember what the other one is. It might be an ND. This is the Mitsuba. It says so right there. I'm not some kind of genius. I just read it on the side of the case. These are all the same. It doesn't matter where they go. Like that. Turn this around here. And then we're going to take and just tap off our end plate. There we go. I can already see the brush stuff starting to fall out of it. Oh yeah, that's nice. Hmm. That's no good. This has come loose from whatever it used to be not loose from. There's our planetary gears. Interesting things. Planetary gears. The brushes look pretty good, unfortunately. That's not what's wrong with this thing. Pretty sure that is supposed to hook to that brush. So there's a pretty good chance if we could get that hooked to that, we'd have a starter that works. This is pretty pooched too, but it's not worn down. I think we could clean that up and that'd probably work. So let me see what a starter motor will run for this and then we'll make a decision whether we're gonna actually fix this one or if we're gonna do something different. I took the bolt out of there, the screw out of the starter and this piece right here used to be part of that. Kind of like that. And this is what supplied power to that brush. So I think if we can get this heated up and slide this piece off, maybe we can come up with a new fixture to put on there and make that work again. Looks a little hanky, but you know, Sometimes you just got to do what you think you might be able to do even if you know you can do it or not. It's still worth a shot So with that said We're gonna see if we can fix this. I haven't looked up another one But uh, I know from Honda. This is either discontinued or higher than a cat's back but uh, Aftermarket it's probably way cheaper, but it's way less gooder too So, With that said, I think that's a plan. All right, let's take a shot at this See if we can pop this little fitting off here. Gotta wait for our soldering gun to warm up. All right, we took our soldering iron and we heated this up and popped off the little fitting that's on there. So we're just left with the uh, copper strap. It's not really a wire, it's more of a strap. So we'll get us a fitting that'll fit on there and have a hole in it to attach to that brush. I think we'll be in good shape. I think the rest of this starter will actually still function. So we'll give that a shot. A professional solder, I am not. That looks okay. Not fantastic, just okay. So now all we gotta do is make this, set it here like this, and then make this line up with that. I've got a feeling that's still just a titch hot.
<clears throat> kind of like that. Then we'll take our brush wire, and we'll put it over the top of it, kind of like that. If you can see, well, nope, can't see around my hands at all. Just like that. So we'll put the brushes on here, then we'll get that screw in there and see if we can get it all to start. All right, put our screw in. If it's possible. Get it angled just right. Kind of like so. I think that looks pretty good, but we still got to put our rotor in here before we get too carried away. So, yep, I think that'll work. All right, we're going to clean up our stator commutator here. <clears throat> Just going to use some uh, emery cloth. Give it a little blow. See if we can get this to drop through here. There we go. Set this thing in its groove right there. Now this will set up a little higher. It'll be more proud than it is now. So it's not, it's just hanging down low because we don't have all our bearings and stuff in there. Now I'll put our screw back in. I burnt the crud out of myself on the soldering iron a while ago. It was sitting there and I went to move it and wouldn't you know I grabbed the hot end. And I'll tell you what, it did not take me long to feel that end of it. I let go of it pretty quick. There we go, make sure we're not grounded to anything. Looks pretty good. Now we'll go ahead and set this end cap on. There we go, just like that. We'll try it again. Probably won't work. I think we got it. Now we gotta do is put this in together. We'll do that down here on the bench. Now we'll put this thing back together and we're going to pretend like this gasket's still in here. Cause I just don't have one and I'll just wanna see if this thing is gonna work. So I'm going to clean this up just a touch and then we'll slide her together. But we need to make sure this plate with its square corners sits down over that nubbin. Like that. Boom. Then we can set our planetary in. It's another place where I want to put just a little bit of lube. I don't want to get carried away because I don't know if this thing's going to work or not. And we'll find our witness marks. We'll set this thing around like this as we set it together. See if we can get that to set down. I think we might be a tooth off on our planetary. I think that's it. 
put her screws in and put the juice to it and see if she hops or twirls or whatever. All right, let's see if she'll zing. Ooh, look at that. Huh? That's what we've been waiting for. We'll put this baby back in and see if we can get it to turn over. All right, we're gonna to attempt to put this in and I'm gonna do my usual and try to keep my hand as much in the way as possible so you can see the least as possible. So we'll slide this back in here kind of like that. Get rid of that. Kind of like that. And then we'll try to guide it up here and catch that sprocket. And you gotta align the splines at the same time. So this really, could we possibly get that lucky? Been dreading this for hours. Oh, jeepers. Oh. oh, gosh, I hope that lined up. That would be amazing. We'll leave that just a touch loose in case we need to wiggle it to get this other bolt started. Alrighty. Back one's done. Our front one. Back of the starter, front of the bike. Ah, ah. There we go. That's plenty good. All right, we're getting our stuff hooked up here. Got a bad case of green crusties in there, don't we? Whoo, look at that. Serious green crusties. That's the best conductivity you can get right there. That's the ground. That should work pretty good. Maybe. Let's see what we got. Got some smoke rising off our connections here. I think our starter's a little weak. Let's see how much of that is just our wire. I think we're going to need a starter. 
That's too bad, because I was really wanting to hear this thing fire up. I know it's not hydrolocked because we cranked it over by hand a minute ago, or a while ago, and it cranked over. So I know it's not hydrolocked. We got just a weak, weak starter. We could not have enough battery too, but that thing should crank better than that. Let's, uh, hmm, we just need a starter. That's too bad. Alrighty. Well, guys, I guess that's where this one's going to end. We'll get a starter and see if we can't make this thing crank. Well, I got some exciting news. Turns out I might have started a starter some more and. Now she cranks. She does make noise. Now the garbage are so gummed up we can't open the throttle. A couple of cylinders anyway. Means the rest of them will probably come around. When I say we can't open the throttles, I mean we cannot open the throttles. Let me give it a little assist down here. There, they're part of the way open now. Yep, she's getting a little thick in here. I'm gonna open the garage door. But this baby will run. We gotta go through, ha, <laughs> geez. Let's uh, just step outside for a minute. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's all the gas and crap out of the exhaust. Well, this baby will run, that's for sure. We still got to do a whole bunch of work on it. We're going to do the carbs and the brakes, the tires, and you name it. But by gosh, we're on the right track. We know she'll make some noise. Now I just got to clean up a hell of a mess. All right, we're going to stop this video here, and we'll pick up next time, probably pulling the carburetors out of this thing and finish up the gas tank. Thanks for watching. God bless.